I'm ready to change. I'm ready to grow. I'm ready to be delivered. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so today, for the next few minutes, I want to talk to you about how to heal an offended heart. How to heal an offended heart. How to deal with offense. I want us to open up our Bibles to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. We're going to start from verse 1. Luke chapter 17, verse 1. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. I'm telling you guys, make sure you take out, uh, if you got a notepad, or you should have a note section in your phone, but I want you to take notes, because this is going to be, <clears throat> might be the most important lesson inside of this entire series. All right, Luke 17, verse 1. The Bible says, and then Jesus said to the disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come. Everybody say impossible. Now this is the same Jesus who said that with God, nothing is impossible. So Jesus told us nothing is impossible but then he lets us know in this verse that there is something that's impossible. It's impossible for you to go through life without an opportunity to be offended. Without an opportunity to face an offense. Let's keep reading. It is impossible that no offenses should come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It will be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him or correct him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in one day and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive them. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. So what I'm going to teach you right now, you're going to need a little bit more faith to apply it in your life. So just say, Lord, increase my faith to do what you say to do. <laughs> Bible says that if somebody offends you seven times in one day, you are never justified to not forgive them. When we talk about offense today, I want you to understand what an offense is and I want you to understand how to deal with it because according to Jesus, he said that it's impossible for you to live and go through life without offense coming. So there's nothing that you can do to get away from an offense. You can live under a rock and you'll get offended at the rock. <laughs> you can move to paradise, move to Hawaii, and you'll get offended there. It doesn't matter where you go, something will offend you. The weather might offend you. <laughs> you know, the Bible lets us know that offense is something that is so hard. Proverbs 18, verse 9, 19 says, a brother offended is harder to win than a strong city, and contentions are like the bars of a castle. That when a person is offended, when a person gets into their feelings 
and believe that they have been wronged and feel justified in, in, in being or feeling the way that they feel, the Bible says that nothing, it's harder to, it's easier to win a city than to try to win that person over. Why? Because nobody can undo your offense except for you. It don't matter how many flowers somebody sends you, how many gifts a person gives you. If you don't want to let go of the offense, you will not. Amen? So when we talk about strongholds, offense is one of the biggest strongholds in people's lives. I can't pray that off of you. I can't cast the spirit out. See, we think offense is a spirit. No, it's a heart issue. It's not a spirit of an offense. You have an offended heart. You've allowed offense in your heart. And as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So the only way you can get free from offense is by releasing it and forgiving and letting it go. Are you with me? So if you, when you believe you've been wronged, you will hold on to that offense. Now, last week, I talked about the four tactics of the devil or the four, the four tactics or the four schemes that the enemy uses um, to manipulate us. And I said the, uh, those four things were suspicion. Who remembers? Number one was suspicion. Number two was temptation. Number three was deception. And number four was offense. And I said I was going to leave offense to, the, to, to last because I want to dedicate a whole teaching to it. Because I've seen offense ruin people's lives over and over and over again. 90% of people who leave churches leave churches because they were offended. 90% of the people who left this church it was because they were offended. Doesn't mean they were right or wrong just means they were offended. And th the enemy uses offense to get you off track, to get you to leave the path of correction and the path of maturity. Guys, you will never mature or never grow up in Christ if you don't learn how to get over offense. You will never mature. Immaturity in Christianity is when people live with offense. And anytime God is getting ready to take you to another level, he sends offense. <laughs> Every time God is getting ready to promote you, he's going to send a, a, an offense to come. It can come through the way of a person. Guys, when people started getting offended at me, I said, wow, that's really a spirit. People were offended at Jesus. Jesus was perfect. He never sinned. But people were offended. Do you guys know, um, the Bible talks about in, um, in Matthew 11, John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, got offended at Jesus. John the Baptist, the one who prepared the way for him, baptized him, saw him get out of the water, saw the Holy Spirit descend on him like a dove, had that whole experience. A few months later, a few, a few, a few uh, maybe a year later, John gets arrested, and he's in jail, and then he asks his disciples, go to Jesus and ask him if he's the Christ, or should we look for another? John, Jesus told his disciples, this is when John was in jail, go back and tell John what you see, that the lame are walking, the blind are seeing, people are getting healed, right? He tells them to go back and tell them what you see. And then Jesus' response to his followers where he said, blessed are those who are not offended because of me. He knew John was offended because John was preaching about Jesus and expected Jesus to get him out of prison. See, this is one of the ways people get offended. When you get offended, it's because you believe that someone owes you something. 
And when they don't do it for you, you take offense. John believed that Jesus owed it to him to get him out of prison because he was preparing the way for him. Didn't you say you're going to open the prison doors? Didn't you say you were going <laughs> to set the captives free? Well, here I am. What about me? And I really believe John the Baptist, he never made it out of prison. And I believe John didn't make it out of prison because of his offense. And as just like some of us, I believe there are some prisons, some areas in our lives that we are still in bondage to the grips of the enemy because we are trapped in offense. And the only way that you're going to get set free from that cycle, that, that, that repetitive barrier that keeps coming in the way, every time you, you try to take a step forward, it's like your life keeps getting pushed back. It's because you have an offense in the way that God, is, God wants to get it free, get, get it out of your way so that you can be set free. Amen? So I want you to understand offense because A, you, it's never going to stop coming. So you just have to learn how to prepare for when it comes. Like if you live in Florida, you know hurricanes are coming. So what do you have to do? Prepare. You got to learn how to prepare. You got to take the precautions. Uh, or you just decide not to live there. <laughs> People that live in Iowa, they know tornadoes are coming. So they prepare for tornadoes. When you know that something is inevitable and something is coming, you have to prepare for it. Amen? Most people give into offense because they're just not ready for it when it comes. I told you most people leave churches prematurely because they're offended. People ruin business opportunities because they get offended, walk off of their job because they've been offended by their boss. See, there's a difference when you leave because it's time or there's a difference when you leave because you were offended. And when you leave and react to an offense, it's never the right time. Because how are you ever going to grow and mature and develop the fruit of the Spirit if you don't learn how to endure tough times? Most people offend, get offended in church when someone is correcting them. When a leader is correcting them, a pastor is correcting them, a home group leader is correcting them. Correction is the only way that you can grow up into perfection. Come on, you got to learn how to receive correction. Not run away from it. Are you with me? Jesus said in the last days, in, in Matthew 24, we read this last week, how Jesus said in the last days, many will be offended and will betray one another. When a person has, a, has an offense in their heart, it's easy for them to betray others. When you are offended, it's, you, have, you, have, you lack loyalty. And here's the thing. God will sometimes allow offenses to come into your life to expose the heart of the people around you. There are people that you think are for you, that you think are really loyal to you. But when something comes up they don't like and they were offended at you because of it, then it exposes their true hearts towards you. Come on, sometimes it is, it is best that offenses come to really show you the nature of the people who are around you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember in John 6, the Bible says that Jesus, you know, Jesus had more than 12 disciples. Jesus had hundreds of disciples. And the Bible talks about Jesus had a conversation with these disciples. And he said, hey, guys, you're going to have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. <laughs> you guys heard that before? 
He said, you're going to have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And the Bible says all of his followers, after they heard that, the Bible said they were offended at the statement. They didn't ask questions to find out what Jesus, what do you really mean by that? The Bible says that, no, they left. And when they left, he was, it was down to 12. And he looked at the 12 and he said, are you going to leave too? <laughs> Jesus did not chase his followers that left him because they were offended at him. Because sometimes God will offend our minds to reveal our hearts. God will offend the mind to reveal the heart. The 12 that remained, remained because they had the right heart towards him. Minus one. <laughs> his name is Judas. But let me help you, what, help you understand what is offense. So what is an offense? What is an offense? The word offense in the Greek is the Greek word scandalon. Scandalon. It's where we get the word scandal from. Scandal. Now, when you think about a scandal, is there anything good about a scandal? <laughs> That's where the word um, scandal comes from, the Greek word scandalon. And it means, watch this, it means a trap. Scandalon means trap. It means a snare. It means an occasion to fall or an occasion to sin. Offense means a, it, a, an offense is a snare. It's, a, it's an occasion to fall or an occasion to sin. It also means a trap. A trap. So when an offense comes, I want you to understand the true nature of it. Um, the Greek word scandalon also interpreted is also interpreted as a stumbling block or a stumbling stone. So it's like something that you gets you to trip. You trip over something and then you fall into something else. So when the enemy sends an offense, it is a trick or it's a trap to get you to fall into sin. So for example, if someone steps on my sneakers and I slap them, right? <laughs> the offense was they stepped on my sneakers. And my, and, and my reaction of slapping them, in my mind, I feel justified because you stepped on my sneakers. But their offense is not an excuse for my sin. Two wrongs don't make a right. And so when a person feels that you, when you, someone has offended them, they have, the, they have an opportunity to react however they choose to, and they choose a, a, a way that is not modeling Christ, they have just taken the bait of the enemy. <laughs> because the, the bait is, the, tr the trick is, I'm going to let somebody step on their on foot just so that they can sin. Does that make sense? And that's why Jesus said offense can happen anyway. People get offended because somebody walked past them the wrong way. Somebody looked at them the wrong way. And you take offense at that. I remember one time... Uh, we, somebody who was dealing with offense and um, someone wanted to honor them to, 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 to show them um, that they were doing a good job here. And um, the person decided to give them flowers to show them that, hey, we honor you, we care about you. And the person got offended that they got them flowers. Why did they say, why, why were you offended at the flowers? Because I felt like the person was trying to put me on the spot. 
You see, the offense causes you to see things the wrong way. If I was to show you, Andrew, come here. Here's another way I want you to understand how offense works. When, when, when you hear the word offense, I also want you to think about offense, like offense in a gate. What offense does is that it causes you, when a person is offended, let's say Andrew is the offense. After I've been offended by Andrew, and that offense comes into my heart, that offense now obstructs my view that I can now no longer see past the offense. So he literally is now offense, and all I now see is the offense. I now see things from the perspective of how it hurt me. So this is how biases come in, prejudices come in. I'm only seeing things from my point of view, but I can't see what's on the other side of the fence. So I'm walking around. Everywhere I go, I got a fence. What he did to me, what Andrew did to me, offended me last, last week. He didn't sing my favorite song in worship. I'm offended. <laughs> and I hold on to that, to that offense. He doesn't even know that he offended me, but I'm holding on to the, to the offense. It now begins to obstruct my view of reality. Thank you, Andrew. So offense is offense that obstructs your view. This is why um, uh, Matthew 5, Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God the two things that obstructs our view of God is a wounded heart and an offended heart a wounded heart and an offended heart so we want to make sure that we get rid of offense because it becomes a stumbling block and it is a trap of the enemy to steal and to sabotage my relationships, to destroy my destiny, to, to hinder my healing progress. All right, so here are a few things I want you to know about offense. Number one, offenses will always come. Luke 17, one, it's impossible for you to not face offense. Offenses will always come. Say, offenses will always come. Now, Jesus said, make sure you're not the one doing the offending. Right? Because there's, there's always two, uh, uh, in a situation of offense, there's the offended and the offender. Right? So, Jesus said, make sure you're not the one doing the offending. But here's another thing I want you to know about offense. Number two. We will all offend someone in word or deed. We will all offend someone. Let me show you in the Bible, James chapter 3. Look at James chapter 3, verse 2. The Bible says, for in many things we offend all. If any man offends not in word, the same is a perfect man. Another translation says, for we will all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is mature. The word, remember that said the word offense is the word stumbling block. So when you see the word stumble, it's talking about offense. So we're all gonna st stumble we're all going to say something or do something that might cause someone to feel offended. But here's what happens. The mature you get, the less offending you will do. <laughs> the more mature you get, the less offending you'll do. And the more mature you get, the less offended you will feel. One of my goals in life is to be unoffendable. What I mean by that? To live in such a way that nobody can offend me. 
Do you think that's possible? <laughs> Somebody said, I don't. here's what the Bible says. Watch this. Psalm 119, verse 165. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. <laughs> The Bible says that those who love the law, love the word, will have great peace and nothing will offend them. You can live unoffendable. When you learn to trust God's word, when you love his truth and learn to stand on his word, you will not be offended. Why? Because I understand offense is nothing but a trap. It's a sneer. I want to outsmart the devil. I don't want to look at the trap and walk onto it. If I know it's a trap, I'm going to walk around it. Come on, mice got more sense. They see a trap after that second time, they know not to go take the bait. I'm not looking for, for that cheese anymore. Come on, church. We, the Bible says, don't be ignorant of the devil's devices or the devil's schemes or the devil's traps. You got to start raising your eyes and start recognizing, wait a minute, every time I'm getting ready to go through this door, the devil sends this trap and I'm not going to take the bait anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every time I feel like my life is getting ready to go to a higher level, here this person comes with the same drama. They always seem to call you right when you're getting ready to go to prayer. And pulls you right out of the spirit. And puts you right in the flesh. It's an offense. It's a trap. It's a snare. And you need to ask the Lord to give you discernment that you can see the trap for what it is. Now, a good trap, you don't know that it's a trap until it's too late. <laughs> this is where wisdom comes in. You need to pray and ask God, God, give me the wisdom. Let me see the patterns. See, the devil is not omniscient, meaning he's not all-knowing. The devil does not know everything. He's not everywhere at all once. He's not omnipresent. That's God. But what the enemy does is that he studies our patterns. He studies our lives, and he knows our temptations. He knows the blood, your bloodline struggles. You know, there's certain struggles that are in the bloodline. Come on, David had a thing for woman, and then Solomon had a thing for woman. <laughs> there's certain things that, even in your family tree, there's patterns, and you gotta become woke. You gotta become aware of the devil's devices, amen? So I said offenses will always come. I said number two, we will all offend someone in, in word or deed. Even if you expect to speak the truth, you're going to offend people. Amen? When you tell the truth, if you preach the gospel, you tell people that sin is wrong, people get offended. We live in a cancel culture where if you tell people something is wrong, they immediately take offense. And so here's the thing. We got to understand, we have to, we have to first, and un, first, and first understand that I'm also going to offend some people along the way. Jesus knew that his assignment was to reach the sinner. It was not to reach the religious. So Jesus offended the religious all the time. He never sinned, but he offended them. 
Why? Because he didn't tell them what they wanted to hear. And a lot of times we are afraid to be honest and we're afraid to be truthful because we think that if I tell the truth, somebody's going to get offended and be mad at me. But guys, if you want to live free in your heart, you have to understand that I choose truth more than I'm afraid of you being offended at me. I have to live free. I have to be free in my heart. And if the Holy Spirit is telling me to do something, I don't care how you feel about it, I got to do what God says to do. And the truth has a way of making everything right. You guys know that? The truth has a way of, 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 of convicting the hearts of people who might be initially offended, but eventually convincing them of what was true all along. I, have a, I know of a story of a, a man who believed that he was a homosexual. And he was a homosexual for half of his life. And um, his coworker, a friend of mine, just kept feeling like the Holy Spirit kept telling, kept putting in her heart to say to him, you're not gay. That was what she said. You're not gay. You're not a homosexual. So she was afraid to say it, but she knew she just kept feeling the urge to let this person know that. And they had a pretty good relationship at work. So it was, it was, a, it was a common, it, it wasn't anything like just showing up to somebody and just telling them about themselves. They had a relationship. So then she said, one day she just got up the courage to say, you're not really gay. And he got mad. He said, what? She said, you're, I, don't, but I, don't th- I don't think you're really gay. He got mad, stormed off, maybe cursed her out, whatever. They didn't talk for about a month. So she's questioning, like, did I say the right thing? I didn't mean to offend him. I didn't want to, you know, do it that way. A month later, he comes to work and tells her, you know what, you were right. I'm not really gay. The person had to change her heart. And he said, I'm th- thank you for telling me that. Miracle, transformation, all because under the anointing, she said something that God told her to say. See, you can't just go up to anybody and say that. But in that moment, the Holy Spirit did it. This is why you got to respond and learn how to discern good and evil, have a pure heart before this person, right? We try to tell people off that, remember I told you last week, if your heart is not right to a person, don't give them a word. If you don't like them, keep it to yourself because it's not going to come from a pure place. So we got to learn, A, offenses will come, B, Offenses who will offend people in word or deed. Okay. Um, here's another thing, number three. Offenses are necessary to reveal our hearts. We learned that. And here's another thing, number four. Offenses can be justified or not justified. A person can be just, an offense can be justified or unjustified. Meaning a person that is offended could be legally justified at being offended. What do I mean by that? A person could have legitimately hurt you, betrayed you, did something to to cause you pain. And you can be legally justified in feeling hurt. But you are never legally justified to not forgive them. You are never legally justified to be bitter. You're never legally justified to hold on to unforgiveness. Never. Jesus will never give you a pass, no matter how bad the offense was. He said, if they hurt you seven times in a day, every time, he said, forgive them. 
Because the forgiveness is not for the person, it's for you. Someone betrayed you, someone turned their back on you, you did nothing wrong, but you can choose to remain bitter or you can choose to forgive. And I'm telling you, offenses are stumbling blocks on the path of your destiny. You can trip over it and fall into sin, or you can walk over it, be a, bitter, a better man or a better woman, be bigger than the offense, and make a decision to not be offended. It's your choice. It's your choice. Amen? So how do we deal with offense? How do we get out of offense? Here's the first thing you need to learn how to get out of an offense. Number one, you have to die to your right to be offended. Die to yourself. Die to the thought and the idea that you have a reason to be offended. There is no circumstance where you are allowed to hold on to offense. I got a right to be offended. You don't know what they did to me, pastor. You don't know what my last pastor did. That's your last pastor. Because you're gonna hold on to that offense, come into another relationship, come into another church, come into somebody else's life, holding on to the offense. And remember what I said offense is, offense is offense. So here's what's gonna happen. You come into another church holding on to offense, then you're gonna look at Andrew and treat him like the person who, who gave you the offense. You're gonna look at your next pastor and look at the, la, your, la, your next pastor through the view of the last pastor who hurt you. You're gonna come into a new relationship and then now everything that this person does is gonna have to be filtered through the lens of the offense. One of the signs that you have an offended heart is that you investigate and exaggerate every small thing a person does to find a fault. <laughs> That's one of the signs a person is offended. They have a hypercritical spirit. They look for faults. It's called fault finding. I'm just waiting for them to say the wrong thing. Because the minute they say it, I'm out. I found my reason to be offended. No, the Bible says, stand there, um, Andrew. The Bible says, <laughs> don't offend me. In Proverbs 19, 11, a person's wisdom yields patience, and it is to one's glory to overlook an offense. It is one's glory to overlook an offense. So once again, the way I get over an offense is not by looking at the offense, it's by overlooking, overlooking the offense. Because that's the only way I'm gonna see beyond my hurt. I gotta look past it. If not, I'm only gonna keep seeing the same things. I'm gonna keep finding uh, uh, um, dis disagreements. I'm gonna keep finding disrespect. You see, you, you, I'm going to keep finding rejection based on the last offense. So if my last offense was rejection, I'm only going to keep seeing rejection. And I'm going to read rejection into everything. So if, he offend, if, I was, if, if I wanted to be on a worship team and he told me no and I got offended, then anything that he says from that point on, I'm going to see rejection. <laughs> So then he says, hey, let's go out to eat. I'm not going out to eat with him. <laughs> he, he hurt me. He disrespected me. He offended me. When he told you no, just because you were not ready yet, and he wanted to get you an opportunity to begin to train and develop so that you can be ready one day. See that? But you get stuck at the offense, and you never grow up. You never mature. You live right at that last hurt. 
So now you never get to grow. You never get to go to a new height in God. So that's why if you want to go to new levels in the glory, you got to learn how to overlook offenses. <laughs> Even if this person really offended you, it's okay. What does the Bible say to do with offense? Number two, forgive them. That's it. Thank you. Number two, forgive. Everybody say forgive. Forgive, forgive those who offended you. Right? You got to deal with that mess in order for you to progress. You got to deal with the mess in order for you to progress. You forgive and you let go of what happened. I'm overlooking that offense, number one. Number two, and I'm going to forgive it. Forgiveness is a release of an offense. When I'm walking in, offense, when I'm walking in unforgiveness, I'm holding on to the offense. When I choose to let it go, I'm walking in forgiveness. Colossians 3, verse 13 says, bear with each other, put up with each other, and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. See, dude, this is the motivation for you to, 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 walk in, um, in, to walk in forgiveness. Jesus said, forgive and you shall be forgiven. When I hold on to offense, you know what I'm doing? I'm giving God permission to withhold something from me. That's why I said, God, there are some blessings that are on hold in your life that God will not release to you until you release the person who offended you. God's glory cannot flow through an offended heart. Life is in the blood. So just like how your heart, your natural heart, there's something where you, is a, there, there are valves where blood flows. And when your heart is obstructed, the, the blood is ain't flowing. The life is ain't flowing the way it's supposed to. The same thing happens in your, spirit, your spiritual heart. Offense, bitterness, unforgiveness, all are like blockages in the heart. And it prevents and obstructs. God's glory and God's blessings and God's benefits from flowing into your life. Guys, I don't want my life to be delayed. I don't want my life to be delayed. I don't want my life to be put on hold. I don't know about you. And that person who offended you sure ain't worth it. Say, I got to let it go. Like ask somebody next to you, say, you got to let it go. Find somebody else, say, you got to let it go. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we're going to pray, and this is the last thing. You got to commit yourself to maturity. You got to commit. Say, I am committing myself to maturity. See that? Every offense is rooted in immaturity. The more I grew up in God, the less things I found to be offended at. I'm telling you, if you want to grow in the things of God, you got to overlook offenses. <laughs> Guys, I can be offended every week I come to church. <laughs> but I realize I don't have a right to be offended. And if you choose immaturity, you will never be qualified for leadership. You cannot bleed, you cannot lead and bleed on people. And leaders reproduce after their own kind. So if you're offended all the time and you're leading, you're only going to reproduce offended people. Listen, one of, the, one of the glorious characteristics of Hungry for God is our atmosphere of freedom. You know why we have that? Because we don't hold on to offense. People come, people go. People leave, people get blessed. We want everybody to be free. And we, we protect that type of atmosphere and culture in our church by learning, by choosing to not hold on to stuff. 
And that is how you got to begin to cultivate the same level of grace in your life. And if you want God's glory and God's blessing to be on you, the prerequisite of that is by learning how to forgive. Amen? I'm not going to be self-absorbed. I'm not going to be self-righteous. I'm not going to walk around feeling like I'm entitled or I, somebody owes me something. No. That's the, pre, that's the criteria for offense. Nobody owes you anything. I'm going to say that again. There's a great level of freedom that's going to come <laughs> on somebody. Nobody owes you anything but love. And the Bible says you are not supposed to owe anyone anything but love. The only right I have is the right to love you the right to forgive you. I don't have a right to be offended. I don't have a right to hold on to grudges. I don't have a right to be angry all the time. That is not of God. And all sicknesses and pains oftentimes are rooted in people holding on to hurt in their lives. People are, are, are battling high blood pressure and battling cancers in their bodies because they are holding on to offense. And when you learn to let that stuff go, all of a sudden you're going to receive your miracle. You're going to receive your healing. So right now at this time, I want us to all stand.